Hey everyone and welcome back to another video in the paper explain series and in this one we are going to talk about a paper that I found to be very interesting and namely that the era of 1 bit LLMs all large language models are 1.58 bits. This paper was really interesting because at least from my point of view it pushes the limits on the way we can represent the weights of neural networks namely with only three values as we'll see further on in the video. So the paper starts by saying that the recent research as BitNet is paving the way for a new era of 1-bit large language models. And in this work, we introduce a 1-bit LLM variant, namely the BitNet B1.58, in which every single parameter or weight of the LLM is ternary, minus 1, 0, and 1. And if you are confused like me and you were wondering why they call it B1.58 instead of B1, because yeah, it says that it's only one bit and they use minus one, zero and one to represent the weights of the large language model. And if you ever took an information theory class, you know that in order to represent three values, you will need log two of three, which is equal to 1.58 something something bits. So yeah. That's why they call it B1.58 instead of B1. And the paper goes on by saying that the B1.58 matches the full precision of the transformer LLM with the same model size and training tokens of both perplexity and end task performance while being significantly more cost effective in terms of latency, memory, through output, and energy consumption. Yeah, and all these advantages enumerated here make perfect sense because we have your weights represented by less bits, so it's less memory, less latency, less throw output and energy consumption. And even more, the 1.58 LLM defines a new scaling law and a recipe for training new generations of LLMs that are both high performance and cost effective. And if you don't know what the scaling law is for large language models, it basically says that if you here have the size of the model and here you have the performance, basically the bigger your LLM is the better it is expected to perform and we are yet to hit those the two here where the performance of the model starts to stagnate when the size increases so yeah we are not sure what happens after a certain point point. and even more interesting it enables a new computation paradigm and opens the door for designing specific hardware optimized for one bit LLMs and here they have a figure that further explains what they are trying to do. So on the left side, we have the BitNet B1.58, and you can see here that in its weights, only the values one, minus one, and zero are allowed. While in comparison for the 16-bit floating point LLMs that we usually use right now, we can have floating point values like the ones depicted here. And they go on and they exemplify with a possible computation using the weights of each model and the random input. So for the floating point 16, we have this weight matrix here, we have this input, and we obtain the following on the first row. We can see here that we perform both multiplications and additions. And as it's outlined also here with red. But on the other hand, for the 158-bit model, we have those weights. Again, we have only ones, zeros, and minus ones. We have an input that could contain floating point values. But this time, on the first row, we perform only additions, as we can see here, or subtractions. So additions and no multiplication. And to repeat what has been said in the abstract, again, this could switch the paradigm from using a GPU to developing a new hardware that is very optimized to perform additions and subtractions. In the introduction, they talk about the era of one-bit LLMs, and I won't go into too much details about this one, but they talk about things like post training quantization and that the trend has been to move from 16 bits to lower bits, such as 4 bit variants. Also, they talk about the recent work on 1 bit model architecture, such as BitNet. And finally, they talk about the model that they introduced in this paper, which is BitNet B158. Again, from my point of view, they just give a higher overview of the recent literature and of this model. And I don't want to go into too many details in this video about this. And I invite you to read this section if you want to learn more about these things. Then the authors go into more details and talk about BitNet B158. 
So the BNET B158 based on the BNET architecture, which is a transformer that replaces NN linear with bit linear. And it is trained from scratch, so you don't have something like training on full precision and then quantizing it down. It is trained with 1.58 bit weights and 8 bit activations. So, as we have said, the weight matrix could take either the values minus 1, 0, 1, and yeah, so on, etc. But the inputs and the activations contain values that are on 8 bits. So, the quantization function. They use the F's mean quantization function, which scales the weight matrix by averaging the absolute value and then round each value to the nearest integer among minus one, zero, and plus one. And then the authors mathematically define the quantization function. So here you have W, which are the weights of our model, and W tilde, I hope that's how you call it, which are the output weights. Here we have epsilon, which is a very low number, and gamma, which we'll see shortly what it means, and the round cliff function, which takes our weights divided by those two numbers, minus 1 and 1. And for gamma, which is defined as the sum of the absolute value of all our weights, divided by the n multiplied by m. So basically, gamma is just a normalizing factor for w. So when we divide W here by gamma plus epsilon, we normalize the weights that we give to this function here. And now this function, which takes as input x, a, and b, and then it takes the maximum between a and the second argument is minimum between b and round of x. And now let's see what all this means by looking at some example. So for instance, let's imagine that our x here that we give to the round cliff function is equal to let's say 3.40 okay then we take the round which will give us 3 then we'll take the minimum between 3 and 1 which will be equal to 1 and then we'll take the maximum between minus 1 and 1 which will give us 1 so again for 3.40 we'll get 1 let's take a negative number let's take for instance minus 4.82 so after rounding up if i remember how the round function works hopefully i'm not mistaken we'll get minus 5 then we'll take the minimum between 1 and minus 5 and we'll get minus 5 and finally we take the maximum between minus 1 and minus 5 and we'll get minus 1 so for minus 4.82, we get minus 1. And now let's take a small number. For instance, let's take 0 0.15. After we round it, we get 0. We take the minimum between 1 and 0, and we get 0. And then we take the maximum between minus 1 and 0, and we get 0. So for 0 0.15, we get 0. And after we have seen those three examples, we can see what this function here round clip does. So basically, it will give us 1 if our input x is greater or equal than 0 0.5. It will give us minus 1 if our input is lesser or equal than 0 0.5. It will give it 0 if our input is between 0 0.5 with minus and 0 0.5. So yeah, here we have all the three values that the bitnet B1.58 can work with. Then the authors go and said that they try to make the bitnet 1.58 architecture to be like the llama. And to do that, they use the RMS norm, swiglu, rotary embedding, and removes all biases. And by doing this, bitnet B1.58 0.58 can be integrated into popular open source software, for instance, Hugging Face, VLLMs, and Llama CPP, with minimal efforts. And now moving on to the results, we have two important tables up here. So in table one, it depicts the perplexity as well as the cost of Bitnet B158 and Llama LLM. And we can see here, we look only at the last column, that for Bitnet that has a size of 3 billion parameters compared to a LALA LLM which also has 3 billion parameters. 
it improves the memory by 3.55 and the latency by 2.71 while also having a lower perplexity which is quite interesting and also they try to make the model larger and increase the size to 3.9 billion parameters and this time it's a little bit less memory efficient decreasing the memory only by 3.3 times and also has a higher latency of 2.4 compared to LAMA2 but also the perplexity decreases which is also pretty interesting and as they have said in the beginning of the paper in the abstract there could also be a scaling log for the 1-bit LLMs if you look at this table here and here in table 2 we have the zero shot accuracy of BitNet B158 and LAMA LLM on the end tasks and you can see here that basically BitNet B158 outperforms LAMA on all the evaluated tasks which is yeah again pretty interesting and also by increasing the size of the model we get even better results as we can see here also in this figure here figure 2 we can see the decoding latency and the memory consumption of BitNet B158 varying the model size in comparison to LAMA so basically when we look at the model size compared to the latency for both BitNet and LAMA we can see that as you increase the model so here we have 1.3 billion and here we have 70 billion the difference between the two in terms of latency increases and the same holds true when we look at the memory consumption so basically when you have a model with 1.3 billion parameters we have an increase of memory for LAMA2 of 2.93 but when you go to 70 billion parameters, we have an increase of parameters for LAMA of 7.16. Also in this table, we have a comparison of the true output between BitNet and LAMA for 70 billion parameters. And you can see that while the LAMA can handle only a best size of 16, BitNet can handle a best size of 176. And true output, which is measured in tokens per second, is 333 for LAMA and 2977 for LAMA2 for BitNet, which is an increase of 8.9 times. And the authors also look at the energy consumption of BitNet B1.58 compared to LAMA at 7 nanometers process nodes. And we can see that there is a huge energy consumption difference between the two of 71.4 times. Why? Because BitNet uses the integer 8 addition while LAMA uses the floating point 16 addition together with the floating point 16 multiplication which consumes much more energy and finally the authors compare the performance of BitNet B1.58 with stable LM 3 billion when they train it on 2 trillion tokens and we can see from this table here that BitNet B1.58 outperforms the stable LM 3 billion on all tasks. Finally, there is a discussion and future work section and they talk about the one bit mixer of expert in LLMs and what would be the implications of that, how the one bit LLMs can improve the long sequence processing, how they can be more suitable for deployment on edge and mobile because they are more energy efficient and faster and consume less memory. And finally, they talk about the possibility of inventing new hardware for 1-bit LLMs. And I invite you all to dig more into these details if you want to learn more about the possibilities that this work can give us in the future. And that's basically it, folks. Thanks for watching. Please hit the like button if you enjoyed this explanation. And see you next time. Bye-bye.